Welcome to Wednesday Inspiration Now. How have you been? We want to look at Psalm 34 because Psalm 34 has very unique situation. My translation says it was written by David and when he pretended to be insane before Abimelech who drove him away and he left. The historical background of this psalm is coming from 1 Samuel chapter 21. We know David killed Goliath and became a hero, yet the king Saul didn't like David at all. He was very jealous and trying to kill David. So he sent his men to kill him and David ran away for his own life and he took a refuge to the land of Philistine. And there he met this king of Gath. His name is Achish. And chapter 21, in fact, the man of king found out it was David. So actually they were telling the king, he's the David, he's the one who killed the Goliath. Interesting enough to know that actually the Goliath is come from Gath, the same part of the land. So they know that David is actually their enemy in their own hands. And David felt really in danger and he pretended to be insane before their presence. He actually acted like a madman and making marks on the doors of the gate and letting saliva run down his beard. And the king said, this is a madman. Let him be out of my sight. So he actually saved himself from the danger from the king. And afterwards, this is the psalm that he wrote. It starts with his own situation, so-called the poor man's prayer. Verse 6, it says, This poor man called. Here we're not talking about economically, but really miserable. It's a wretched, the weak and lacking so many things. This poor man, he's calling himself, he's in danger, he's in the difficult time. He was in miserable situation and he was in trouble. Verse 18, he says, God is close to the broken hearted. That's where he is. And he says, his heart is crushed in spirit. His heart is broken into pieces. He was crushed in spirit. And verse 4 says, he delivered from all my fears. He was afraid. In Psalm, in 1 Samuel 21 says that David was very much afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. He was so close to call. He was close to the danger, losing his life. He was afraid. We feel like we are in this situation. This poor man's prayer before God. This poor man, oh God, we pray to God. And look at the awesome God's response. Verse 4, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Verse 6 says, this poor man called and the Lord heard him and he saved him out of all his troubles. Verse 17, the righteous cry out and the Lord curse hears them, and he delivers them from all their troubles. Verse 20, he protects all his bones, and not one of them will be broken. Verse 22, the Lord will rescue his servants, and no one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. What is God saying? That God is responding to this poor man's prayer. He heard, he delivers, he saves. This is our God, our awesome God, to our prayer. And so therefore, the David gives praise. In verse 8, he says, Taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. The one who takes refuge in him, King James Version says, who trusts in him. He actually fled to the land of Philistine, but God was our refuge. 
And he says, taste and see the Lord is good. This is not just a saying that he actually experienced it in a deeper sense. And he says, the taste and see the Lord is good. We often say that God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. It's not just a saying it. Do you really mean it? From our own lives, that we experience the love of God and the power of God. And He delivers, He saves, He protects us. And we say, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Verse 10 says, The lion may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Verse 7 says, The angels of the Lord encamps around those who fear Him, and He delivers them. Can you believe this? The angels of the Lord encamps and protect us and guide us and help us. And verse 5 says, those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. I mean, their faces shine with the joy and peace and the love of God. We look so dim these days. We feel very doomed in many ways. Yet here, give a praise to God and say that those who look to him are radiant. Their face shines because we trust in God. And we begin to say, the taste and see how the Lord is good. And that's why he gives praise in verse 1. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. And glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together, giving praise to God. This is our praise in the time like this. We exalt God and praise him for he has been good to us. Lifting his name on high. Taste and good and see the Lord is good. Finally, the psalmist gives blessing. To those who also seek the Lord. Verse 9. Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him lack nothing. The fear God, same means in revere God, worship God. In verse 11. Come my children, listen to me. I'll teach you the fear of the Lord. Acknowledge God as who he is and worship him. In verse 12, it says, Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, now that's us. That's us, O oh God. And listen, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies and turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And verse 22 says, The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him, who trusts in him, will be condemned. This is God speaking to us. And God blesses us in that way. The depressed father and son, because difficulties in their lives, were driving, and as we're passing by, on the side there's a big billboard, and there's a bunch of words, actually 12 letters was written without much space. It says G-O-D-I-S-N-O-W-H-E-R-E. And father looked at that, he was very depressed, and he was in, in, in his sorrow. He said, Look, God is nowhere. And then son, look at that and said, No, Dad, look it again. I read, God is now here. What do you see? God is now here. He delivers, He saves. And we exalt God, we praise God. Because we see how God is good.
to us. May this blessing be with us in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you that from our own experience in our walk with God, that we can confess that you are good and you are loving God for us. And you are powerful God and you are awesome God. You deliver us, you save us, you hear our prayers. You save us, O oh God. So Lord Jesus, we put our trust in you for you are our ultimate hope. We ask, O oh God, that you watch over us and bless us as we continue to keep in with you. We pray, Lord, that your power will be upon us. May you lead us and guide us that we can be pleasing to you. We thank you, Lord. We give all the praise to you. We worship you. We exalt you. May you be with us and bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.